Having a Briar Fun Day is a terrific way to introduce kids to the model horse hobby. You can have a fun day in any size space in your store. Painting stable mates is easy, fun, and encourages creativity. Here is Cheryl Leisure, an artist who has worked with Briar on creating model hobby events, to tell you how to get started. First, I want to tell you about the products that we use. We're using the Briar Stablemate models, and they come to you in a primer coat ready to be painted so that the paints that the kids use will stick. And the primer that we use is this Krylon Sandable White Primer. It goes over very well on the plastic briars. And once it comes to you that way, then the kids are ready to go. The other thing that we use is an acrylic paint. Acrylic paints are water-based and they're non-toxic but they do stain clothes. So we like to inform the kids and their parents when they're first showing up that this paint, uh, once it gets on your shirt, it's not going to come out. Once the horses are finished, it's recommended that perhaps you have a hair dryer with you on that day because the paint, depending on where you live, takes a little while to dry. And you might want to just have someone in the corner helping the children dry that horse and so that they can take it home with them and not have it still be moist and ruin their lovely artwork that they've put into this. The one thing that I like to tell kids when we get started is that a little goes a long way and two thin coats is always better than one thick one. Kids really like to get started and go as fast as they can so you have to keep it to a minimum about the washing of your paint brushes and all the instructions that they need because they're going to want to jump in and get the paint on their horses as fast as they can. One of the best tools that we use are cosmetic sponges and you can get these sponges at any drugstore. They're very inexpensive and they help the children to apply the paint quickly and thinly and it gives it a nice even coat all the way across. So thin, thin, thin is what I always tell the children and make it a little bit easier and a little bit faster for them. So as soon as they get their first coat on, they can have it dried, should only take a few minutes, they can come back and put the second coat on. This paint covers itself very well. So I don't have the children worry, say they want to paint a brown horse and they want to put a black mane and tail, but I've slopped brown paint all over this. Don't worry, when you come back to the black, it'll cover right over that brown. They can add the white leg markings, the face markings. A lot of children like to paint a horse that looks like their horse at home. But paint the body color on first, make sure it's totally dry, and then they can come back and add all the little details that make it look like their horse. So I've already put a first coat of paint on that horse, and I used this sponge. So all I'm going to do is put a little bit more paint on my tray. Just get yourself some paper plates. They make wonderful palettes, plenty of paper towels. And if you have a bucket and you can get the a whole bucket of water and some paper cups. You can give each child their own cup to use and they can use their palette here and they can actually hold their little horse on their palette. And they're less likely to get paint all over your tables, but you might want to cover your tables too, just in case. So all you have to do is squeeze out a little bit of paint, a little goes a long way, and dab, dab, dab. That's the word I keep repeating over and over again with the kids. Don't smear it on, don't brush with it, but dab, dab, dab. And when you put the coat on, you're just pounding it onto the horse model. Now, I always ask the children to leave a handle, either a leg or a tail that they don't paint, so that you always have something to grasp so you can turn the horse around and get all sides of it done. Sometimes the children get very worried because they can't get the sponge to punch that paint into a little tiny crack. That's where your paintbrush can come in. Just dab it in the cracks and then take your sponge and spread it out. And that's how they get the horse completely covered all the way around. Now you're going to get a selection of paints that has different shades of brown and generally I'll just open these lids and ask them, well, which color do you want? Sometimes, since Spirit is so very popular, you'll get a lot of children who want to make a buckskin horse, and that would be something where you would use this color, which is a golden brown, and they're going to want to put the black legs on it later. This is a chestnut color, which is your burnt sienna, and we also have some other darker shades of brown, and of course your black and your white. 
that the kids can use to make different shades of bays and palominos. So you can, these paints can be easily mixed together. Uh, I encourage some of the older kids who are a little bit more advanced to go ahead and mix whatever color that they want to make it look like the color that their horse is at home. So really this horse is nearly dry already and it's only been just a few minutes. So if I wanted to put black leg markings on this horse, it's hard to do with a paintbrush and not make it look like it just starts and stops. Horses have a nice gradation that goes from black to the body color. That's where your sponge is really going to come in handy because you can put a sponge mark on and you can blend it. And the nice thing about these sponges is they're so big you can tear them and get more use out of them and you get a smaller little edge. So I encourage the kids not to worry about the black right away. Dab it in once the paint is dry on the brown. But all you have to do is start at the bottom of the foot and work your way up with the sponge until the sponge runs out of paint right about the knee. And that's going to blend the black and make the area where the black and the brown comes together look a lot more natural than it would look if they were painting with a brush and they just ended it there. So I show them to do that if they're doing any horse with black legs and then we can add the white foot markings right over the top of the black if the horse has a stocking or a sock. So all of these kinds of questions, it's good to read up a little bit on your horse colors before the kids come and there's a lot of good resources that you can use for that so that when the children are asking you for some things you'll know what it is they're asking you for because they're going to be describing it according to what they see when they go out to the barn. So I'm going to put four socks on this horse. Now the other thing is that when you're painting manes and tails they're very tiny of course and you're going to want to go in there and try to get just the paint on just the mane and the tail and that can be really challenging on a horse this small. I love to see the children work. Um, I never worry if they get the horse colors all over the place. Most of the time the children are so happy and so excited about their models that it's just really a good idea to just let them go with it. And actually it's sometimes almost better if you just leave them on their own, let them be creative, and then they can show their mom what they did later and they don't have to worry about a little bit of messiness. But a, a smaller brush obviously is going to work a lot better no matter what your age and skill level. And then they can come ahead and they can brush paint their manes and tails, put their little face markings on and make it look like their horse if they want. And we do include pink paint or you can mix red and white. A lot of horses have pink on their noses. Children want to do it as realistic as they can. So it's just fun to see what they can come up with. We also have some metallic paints here. Sometimes we see silver and gold horses with black manes and tails. I think it's great to just have a free-for-all and let the children do what they like. Now when the horse is all done and it's been dried really, really well, I come back with a clear coat finish. Now you don't have to provide this for them, but I will at least tell the parents especially, because mostly they're going to want to keep this as a keepsake, that they can go to any hobby store and buy a nice clear coat and that they really do need to spray it over two or three light coats to keep this paint from ever chipping off of the horse. And that should keep it for years to come or to give to grandma or whoever else they want to give it to. Now that you see how easy it is to host a Briar Fun Day, pick a date and contact your Briar sales representative to plan your event. Briar is on the web at www.briarhorses.com.